Cannabis Health Radio, I'm Ian Jessup. And I'm Corey Yellant. When conventional medicine could do nothing more for his gastrointestinal cancer, doctors told him to go home and talk to his 11-year-old son about losing a parent. But thanks to the wife of a co-worker who told him about cannabis oil, his health has improved dramatically. And here to tell his story is Ricky Fontenot of Arkansas. Ricky, good to talk to you. Thanks for doing this. Uh, not a problem at all. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to be able to uh, uh, let people know about my situation and what cannabis oil can do. Take us back to the beginning of your story and tell us when you started to notice that something wasn't quite right with your health. Okay, uh, I think that started in 2013, uh, all through, thir- th- through 2013 and 14. I was experiencing uh, fainting issues. And uh, after many, many trips to the doctor, uh, they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And uh, I uh, then in April of 2015, I got really bad sick. And, uh, of course, for those last two years, I knew something was wrong with me, but they just couldn't figure it out. And, and so when I got sick, I, I was sick for about four days. And, uh, I mean, I obviously knew it wasn't your common cold or flu or any kind of viral infection, and I just couldn't get over it. So uh, I went to my doctor, and they drew some blood, and they finally noticed that I was anemic, and they apologized to me. They said they should have caught it on many of the blood tests before, and they did not, uh, which could have led to a uh, earlier detection they immediately admitted me to the hospital after three days of being in the hospital uh they put me into a uh they put me to a cat scan or ct scan an abdominal uh scan and uh they noticed a a very large area on my stomach and uh, i think there was a dispute between the attending physician who thought it was a an infection pocket and the surgeon who thought it was a tumor and it ended up being a tumor which had attached to my stomach it was a a gastrointestinal tumor a lot of people don't know this but gist uh, or gastrointestinal stromal tumors can grow anywhere in the uh, abdominal cavity they can even end up eventually attaching themselves to the liver small intestine large intestines to the rectum uh, even your pancreas and um, i was attached to the back of my stomach uh, towards the bottom and uh so the only way to know for sure was to perform emergency surgery. Uh, and I found out what was making me sick was that it was a tumor and that uh, it was uh, infected with strep. And so, uh, I mean, that news was pretty tough to deal with. They, the tumor itself ended up being, uh, I want to say it was like 16 or 18 centimeters. It was one of the largest tumors that the surgeon had ever taken out of somebody he was uh he said it was it was rather large and uh the margins weren't great but he felt pretty good that he removed all of the uh tissue around it so hopefully we wouldn't have any problems in the future and then they put me on what they call tk drugs or targeted chemotherapy drugs they're really an inhibitor it's different than your conventional intravenous chemo which kills cancer cells these just inhibit uh inhibit cells from growing so what they try to do is to keep the tumors from growing until they can figure out a, a another treatment your, your conventional chemotherapy and radiation do not work on these type of tumors. Ricky, I just want to say that uh, a 16 centimeter tumor, that's six inches. That is a large damn tumor. That's a very large tumor. Yeah. Yes, so, it is. So <laughs> it, it's in your gastrointestinal tract, and the, and the reason you probably had anemia is because of the tumor was blocking the nutrients from getting into your system. Would that be fair? Yeah. It, well, yeah, that plus I had two, the, the tumor had ate through part of my stomach line and was caused two ulcers, and I was losing blood through my stool, which I didn't notice. I'm I'm not really a person that looks at my stool, uh, but I just want to say to anybody listening to that, from time to time, you should do that. (laughs) Just to check and see. You never know. Uh, And that's that's where I was losing the blood. When I was in the hospital, they had to give me five pints of blood, uh, which is an extreme amount. Uh, After seven pints... After your body is seven pints low on blood, your organs begin to shut down. I was five pints low. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, it was pretty tough. And uh, so 
they started me on the the first TK drug was called Gleevec. It's uh, one of the first drugs uh, that the uh, the uh, Drug Administration approved in 2003. It's called Gleevec, and uh, they've had a lot of success with it. They put me on it. Uh, tumors continued to grow. Uh, or the cancer cells at that time continued to grow. I didn't have any tumors yet. But after my after four months of being on Gleevec and my second CT scan, I then developed two tumors. And basically, they just kept going from one TK drug to another. It, first, it was Gleevec, and then it was, uh, if I remember right, it was Sutent. And then uh, it was... Uh, Stavarga, and then to Cigna was my fourth one. And and every time I went back to the doctor for a scan, uh, which, by the way, I was going to uh, MD Anderson Cancer Treatment Institute and Research Hospital, which is one of the best ones out there. They provided me with great care. Just unfortunately, their type of medicine just did not work for me. You were having these scans. And, um, Sorry to interrupt. You were having these scans every two months. Is that correct? Yeah, I was having the scans every two months. And then after after two scans, if they didn't have any luck with the drug, then they'd move me to another one. And so by the time I got to my fifth, the fifth drug, I've, I had now had multiple tumors, which it, I mean, it was stage four metastatic cancer. I had uh, maybe a 10% ch- chance of living. It's almost like, uh, it's almost as if the, the chemo was actually feeding the cancer. It may have been, you know, I with really every, dr- with every drug I, that you had, you, you had a new tumor. Yeah. You know, and I, and I work, uh, 40 to 50 hours a week in the uh, work for a commercial truck dealership filing uh, warranty claims on on big uh, diesel trucks. And so, you know, uh, and I also am a single father who uh, takes care of an 11 year old full time. And uh, so my life is pretty, uh, pretty stressed as it is, you know, without having to deal with that. And and even though these uh, these drugs are not conventional intravenous chemo they do still tend to make you sick from time to time and i was miserable sick a lot uh dehydrated losing weight felt like i was kind of wasting away so then they on my doctor visit four months ago they started me on what was going to be their last uh tk drug and they basically basically they had a social worker come in and tell me i needed to prepare my son for losing a parent and that i needed to you know have my my things in order and and uh, be ready to leave this this life and that's tough news for anybody to hear uh, oh, i can't even imagine yeah. having to go home and do that and uh yeah it was tough it was it was very tough my my, my son uh, he he does know his mother she's around from time to time but she's no she's no caretaker and and uh, of course i don't speak ill of her but uh you know and that that's worrisome to a child to know that the only person who he really has to take care of him might be gone yeah it, it, it was really, it was really tough. I know. Uh, I, so sorry to interrupt here, Ricky, but I noticed. Um, yeah, good. You know, when you uh, wrote us about what you had going on, so at that point, the scan is showing five tumors between four centimeters and eight centimeters. That that is correct. Wow, that is correct. Wow. Yeah. What's going What's going it, through your mind when when they're telling you that you've got to go home and talk to your son and that basically this is it for you? Yeah. Oh man. It. I, it I'm, I'm going to tell you, when they told me, uh, they continued to talk in that room for 20 minutes. Uh, my mother was in the room with me. Uh, after they said uh, that I needed to you know, prepare my son, they talked for 20 more minutes. I, I didn't hear a word they said. Mm. I literally was just blown away and I could not think of anything else. It I mean, I was so shocked. I couldn't even cry. I couldn't think. I just almost like you were you numb. Know, uh, yeah, it, it was like a, it was almost like an out of body experience. I was just so shocked. I couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I uh, I went home. Uh, you know, that's a, a long ride home from Houston. It's it's eight hours, and uh, I did a lot of thinking on the ride home. And I thought, okay, I, I'm just gonna have to man up and deal with this. And uh, I thought, you know what, there, there is got to be a better way, and I'm a man of faith, and uh, I believe in God, and and I pray, and uh, God answered my prayers. He he sent someone, uh, a the wife of one of my coworkers, happened to hear of my story, 
and she told me about cannabis oil and got me in touch with with uh Corey Yellen and uh luckily uh you know through the information that she provided I was able to uh get started on, on the cannabis oil she she really uh spoke great about it enough to convince me to give it a try and uh, I'm so glad I did that I started the uh the oil I want to say it was June 21st, maybe, somewhere in that area. Yeah, yeah, I had just got back from the doctor. Um, trying to think. Was this of June of 2015 or 2016? This year, 2017. This year. Just oh, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah, I spent, this year. Yeah. I, I spent two years taking these chemo drugs. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Two so, years. And, then you... and, and it just kept developing and growing. And every time I went there, it was more bad news. The tumors were getting bigger. Or now I've got a new tumor. You know, I went from yeah. one tumor to two to three and then to five. And, and, and then they were getting bigger. And it was two years of just being miserable and just praying for some type of good news and, and never receiving it. Well, I remember... It was, it was uh, extremely tough. I remember speaking with uh, your co-worker's wife and thinking, wow, we really have to move fast on this one. And uh, voila, here you are. Yeah, yeah. Here you uh, are. It's, the, so, it, it's, an, it's an amazing tell, story. Tell uh, listeners, Ricky, what happened uh, a couple of days ago. When okay, you went, when so you... uh, after I uh, started on the oil, uh, I, I took the oil for, it was pretty, right at a month I was taking the oil. Uh, within a few days, and just to let the this is also – I hope you guys don't mind me using your form to speak out on, on another issue. I really want to say this. I don't know – I know you. I think, believe you guys are out of Canada, are you not? That's right. Okay. Well, here, here in America, I don't know if you all have the same problem or not, but we have a bad uh, opiate addiction here yes. in the United States. Fentanyl. And let me tell you something. I was, I've been taking – since I've been on this uh, – taking these cancer pills and since I've had this – issue i have been taking anywhere from 90 to 120 milligrams of oxycodone a day that is a very very high amount that's that's almost one of the highest amounts they'll prescribe you and uh i knew within a few months that if i ever did beat this cancer it was going to be very very hard to get off of the pain pills Mm -hmm. because they are very addictive and within just a few days of starting the oil, I had no desire to take those pills at all. And I had completely, I felt so good, I had completely forgotten about taking the chemo medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I boy. was planning on taking the chemo medicine along with the oil, you know, just just as you know maybe maybe one of the two will work you know and and i just forgot all about it and i stayed on the canvas oil and uh trying to hit the targeted dose was a lot easier for me than i hear i, I read a lot uh, about it online and i see that some people have a problem hitting a targeted dose it was not a problem for me i uh i actually it's it's an ingestible so i i injected at first i injected the uh, oil into a twinkie and uh, of course, it made the Twinkie taste like the bottom of a lawnmower. Uh, <laughs> You're the second not, person not, that used that term. That's right, lawnmower, <laughs> bottom, bottom of a lawnmower. lawnmower. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so then I started thinking, what can I just without chewing? What could I swallow? And and so Jello worked out really well for me. I used the Jello, injected into that, and was able to just swallow the Jello, no problems at all. I was able to do the recommended dosage, but I couldn't do it during the middle of the day because uh, I'm working. Right. So I took the total dosage that was required daily and split it into two and did that in the morning and at night. Right. Yeah. And I did it for almost a month. Uh, okay. I was within a few days of a month, and then I go back to my doctor's appointment. And they walked in, and I knew it was good news when they walked in because the doctors were all smiles, and they had a whole bunch of researchers with them. They were shocked themselves. They said they'd never seen anything like it. What they did was they put my scan from two months ago up right next to my new scan. And in a CT scan, the tumors and cancer cells, are light. they light up like a Christmas tree. So I'm looking at the tumors that are lit up on the old scan, and then I look at the new ones, and... The new ones are mostly dark, and so what the doctor tells me is is that tumors die from the inside out. 
and they actually will swell some as they die. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking at my tumors, and the first one I see is probably 70% dead. It's so dark in the middle, and then the only part that's light is just kind of around the edges. And then we start looking at the rest of them, and they're literally just a small ring around the edge that's even lit up. Like they're, the rest of them were like 90%. Just 90% dead. gone, yeah. I, could just, yeah, you, just I just could just see you sitting there, Ricky, saying, Die, you bastards, die. <laughs> oh, yes, I was so excited. I, I, I mean, I, almost, I was just shocked. I, honestly, you know, like I said, I'm a man of faith, and I, I really try to believe that God's going to take care of me. But. After getting bad news every appointment for two years, it was so hard to try to believe something good was going to come out of this. And I was very skeptical of the uh, oil. You know, I really was. Uh, Did the doctors ask you? I was one of those people, you know. I thought, oh, this is a gimmick. This is a gimmick. They're trying to sell something. This is a gimmick. There's no way. This, This can't work. And so I was convinced into it by a coworker's wife who, who actually saw it work on an eight-year-old child. And after hearing that, I said, what do I have to lose? You know, what? I've got nothing to lose. I only have something to gain, which is my life. Yeah. So why wouldn't I, you know? Ricky, so did, I've the, done it. did the doctors ask you what you did or what you were doing? Uh, they did. Um they they te- they they test you for you know they test your blood they they even have you pee in a cup they they they're testing when they when they have you pee in a cup they're really te- they say they're testing for liver enzymes and kidney function but uh, you know that they know I did tell them what I was doing they didn't think it was a great idea. Uh, <laughs> well, no, because you're not spending money on their chemotherapy. Come on, yeah. That's right. That's you know, right. They, 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 get they didn't think for that, that, that was a great idea. And, you know, they're never going to come out and say, well, that the oil healed me. They're always going to believe that it was their their chemotherapy, you know, which I yeah. wasn't even taking. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, that, that was um, your last dr- that was their last choice, wasn't it? Their last drug to try on you. Yeah, and you know I didn't tell them that I didn't take it, and yeah. I, and I I, I kind of wanted to uh, let them know that I wasn't taking it and that I was taking the oil, but I didn't get too much into that because I still need to be treated by these people going yeah. forward. I need it, them to follow, uh, continue to scan me, yeah, to to be able to because this isn't over. You know, no. I've still got ways to go, so I didn't want to ruffle too many feathers there. But, but definitely, I, when you guys uh, uh, asked me to uh, come on your show, I, I wanted to. I was very excited to tell my story because I know there are other people out there who might be at their end, and yeah. there are other options. And this there is are other there. options, and this is a classic and, case of when things are essentially over and they're not over. Yeah. I mean, look at the turnaround yeah. you've done, Ricky. I have to just tell you. Please, 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 once you, you're completely clear, stay on a maintenance dose. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's really key. Yes, 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 yes. I, I believe I, it works well for me. I mean, within a few days, like I said, I was off all pain painkillers. And uh, anybody who's been on painkillers for a long period of time, I tell you, you just do not stop taking painkillers in no. two or three days. No. It's just not possible. Your body will cause you all kinds of problems. So this isn't just about cancer. This is about, you know, this could also be about opiate addiction. A person, Getting- you know, if you're addicted to opiates and it's running your life, go this route. Yeah, we worked for me. We've interviewed you know? a couple of people who got off of uh, opiates uh, using cannabis. Um, yeah, what those was, things are so bad for you, man. They tear up your liver and your kidneys. Those those opiates is so, so bad for you. You just don't even realize. It is know, surprising, that. Ricky, that you you did it cold turkey. I mean, yeah, you, you just yeah, stopped. you know. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, it was, you, I was surprised myself because of how many I was taking. I thought, man, I'm going to have to wing myself off this. There's no way. And within just a couple of days, I had no... I didn't even, when I thought about it, I just almost got sick to my stomach thinking about even taking one of them, you know, yeah. because I was, I just didn't need it. You didn't need there wasn't it. any pain. There wasn't a craving for the pill. I wasn't having any of the side effects that, that people get when they don't take the medication. So I was just, I mean, you know, my friends and family, people that know me, my coworkers, they were like, man, you sure are feeling better. And uh, so I think that's why we were all so positive going into this last doctor's appointment that something good was going to happen was because 
uh, I had never felt that w- that well before. What's your son's so, reaction to? Uh, all he the news? was extremely excited. He, I he really was. Uh, he w- actually, I, I would say. I'm using the wrong word. Excited isn't the word. Relieved is the word yeah. because you could you could tell you know an 11 year old they just know you know what I don't know that they understand death that well. Some of them I'm pretty sure, and I don't. But I think he knew what that meant for him. Mm-hmm. I think he knew that you know with his mom not being able to raise him and his dad being gone that that he was going to spend his time being raised by grandparents and. And, uh, you know, things were going to be different for him. And, and, uh, he definitely didn't want that. And so I think it was a, it was a big smile on his face and a big sigh of relief. Yeah. No doubt. And so, you know, Rick, it was, Ricky, it was great. you are what, 37 years old? 37 years old. Yes, sir. This started when I was 33. <laughs> that is quite so, remarkable. It, two years of, of having anemia and not being able to figure out what was wrong with me. And then, Two years of uh, fighting the cancer, you know. Actually, more than two years now. It's been been almost two and a half. And uh, here I am, you know, uh, with most of my cancer, uh, most of my tumors dead. And hopefully, uh, by the time I go back for my next uh, doctor's visit, hopefully they'll be completely dead. All of us have an endocannabinoid system. We need uh, cannabis within our systems. And it strikes me, listening to your story, being such a young person and suffering these terrible bouts of gastrointestinal cancer, it strikes me that your body was really craving the cancer. Mm -hmm. That's why you got off the, the opiate so quickly. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was amazing to me. I, I couldn't. I couldn't believe uh, that someone could. I've known a few people in my life that had opiate addiction, and I've seen them struggle. And I, I, I myself haven't had it, but I realized that taking those drugs for two years that it was going to be tough to get off of them. And thankfully, I don't have that issue now. <laughs> I don't have to go through what some of these people have had to go through, and they don't—they don't have to either. You know what I mean? They can use this oil, and within a few days, they'll be off off of off of pain medication too, and will have not no cravings for it. You know, that's the, those things can ruin your life. I've seen these people go out and spend. Every dollar they have trying to buy pills off the street from people who are charging way more than they're worth for something that's a man-made chemical that that might take away the pain for a little while, but is really doing more damage to your body than it is anything else. You know, all of these pharmaceutical pills, if this, people don't talk about it, but, but the pharmaceutical business is like a, I want to say it's a $30 billion a year business. It's, it's, it's insane. And... Very little of it is actually good for you. Very little. Most of it is is damaging to your body. No, Ricky. When do you get your next scan? I get my. I haven't got my appointment yet, but uh, it would be around two months from now. Two months from now. So you do it every two yeah. months. You get your next scan. Yes. The last scan you had uh, showed that uh, many of the tumors were dying. And, yes. And uh, what do you expect from your next scan? I expect for my next scan to, to to walk in and them tell me that I'm in complete remission. Yeah. Yeah, won't that be a great moment for you? Yeah, to go from stage four and, and, and needing to start purchasing a burial plot to I'm, you know, com- in complete remission within a, a couple of only, months. This is, like a, this is like three and a half weeks Maybe. Four, yeah, maybe it wasn't. It was let, three just, and a half weeks ago months, that. So yeah, that I talked yeah. to um, his coworker's wife. That was. I re- remember the call very clearly. Yeah. Yeah. When absolutely. you said June, I thought you were talking about June of last year. No. Wow. This is like this three is, and a half weeks. This is amazing. That, yeah. No, it was this. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, it happened very, very quickly, and I, I think you know what? I, I don't. I'm no scientist. I'm no doctor. I'm not even an entrepreneur of marijuana, but. Uh, I can tell you this much. It, it almost seems like the cannabis takes so much of the stress and so much of the pain off your body that your body can really just fight back on its own when it's not having to worry about that. Mm-hmm. And maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's just sure the way that it seems to me. And I know it's more scientific than that, but for a lot of people, you know, we don't know the medical reasonings behind mm-hmm. this stuff. We just know we want to get better. 
I'm just glad your co-worker's wife was able to convince you to try it. Yeah, absolutely. I, hey, listen, I had nothing to lose, and she was very, very convincing, and she, she got me on the phone with you, and after hearing what you had to say and reading a lot of the post uh, for that found what was that foundation? Uh, I cannot remember the name of it now. Something Hearts or... Um, Man, I can't remember, but there was a a, a, a website uh, that pe- it was a forum that people were posting it on that were using the oil Phoenix and all the success Tears. stories they had. F- Phoenix, Phoenix Tears. Tears, yeah, Phoenix was Tears the, cannabis. Man, I, anybody that need that wants to know what this stuff really can do, go to that phoenixtears dot com. That is an amazing or, or site. Or phoenixtears dot ca, and we also have a, a yeah. Facebook page, Phoenix Tears Cannabis Oil Advice with Corey, Janet, and Jen, or Jen and yeah. Janet. That was it. Was uh, I saw a video that my coworker turned me on to of a man that had Parkinson's yes. and he couldn't talk. He couldn't speak. I mean, he could speak, he couldn't do anything. He was literally out of it. Yeah. We interviewed and, him. I mean, it was severe Parkinson's. And then after taking this cannabis oil, I mean, he was just sitting there having a clear conversation like me and you and anybody else. And I, I just thought, wow, that is, I mean, that is some powerful stuff right there to, and, and to think that it's just something, so it's all natural. It's something that God put right here for us. Ricky, how, didn't what, even know. what was your attitude towards cannabis prior to trying it? Well, I was a occasional smoker. Um, I li- I'm going to be honest with you. I like to smoke in moderation. It doesn't take much for me. I'm a lightweight. I'm a person that likes to, I don't care to smoke in public. Uh, I'm a person that likes to go home in the evening, unwind after my shower, sit down smoke a little and, and watch TV but uh, the current job that I'm at does random drug testing. I've been here six years and they know with my cancer situation to keep me off of the list <laughs> because they knew what I was doing. I went and told them you know, that, that I would be doing that so they, they did not random to me but previously I, I had been subject to a few random drug tests so I was uh, just using it every now and then I, I but there has been times in my life where i used it daily uh not a person against it at all i really do enjoy it uh but you know that's like very that's, that's very good of your employer to keep you off the list oh yeah they're they are very nice people i work for a pretty large company we're in eight states 32 dealerships they just i just went to them and and they says hey you know um uh, we will uh, send somebody in your place, uh, you know, if, uh, if if you get pulled on the random because, you know, they said we wouldn't do this for anybody else. But, you know, we understand your situation. You have cancer and you're trying to better yourself. So we're not going to hit you with a uh, drug test, to, uh, you know, get you fired and lose your medical yeah. insurance, you know. So you're just trying they to were save very your understanding life. about it. It's been a tough battle, but uh, I just... Anybody out there that uh, is in that same situation, don't give up hope. There is still a way. It's it's out there. You just got to go and get it. And the information is 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 available. I didn't. I I searched for. I done a lot of uh, researching when I got this uh, cancer about different things I could do for cures, and never once did I really notice anything about cannabis oil. And it just was the luck that a co-worker went home and mentioned it to his wife and she already had experience with it and uh she contacted me and she was so passionate about it and uh, after all the information uh that you guys uh give to me and uh that she gave to me i, I felt like it was uh it was a sign that i needed it i needed to try it and uh it definitely worked and now here i am you know, almost count to hopefully live a full and wonderful life. <laughs> Ricky, I want to ask you one last question. When you, yeah. when you get a second lease on life, what sort of perspective does that give you on life itself? Does it change your attitude? It does. It, it really does. I, you, it, you know, for me, I think that it really, what come to mind was how petty people can be. Uh, mm-hmm. Once you are faced with your own mortality, you look at life a complete different way. You know, I, I feel like I'm not near as petty as I used to be. I used to care so much about, uh, you know, just different things, money and objects and a very ob- objectivity. And, and uh, I was uh, a person who 
uh, I could sometimes get a little too angry, not let the little things go, stuff like that. It really changes your attitude towards life in those ways and just, you know, made me uh, look at my own character and try to make some improvements there because now I've, I've got a second chance here and I want to try to make the best of it. And there's no, there's no need to, to continue uh, some of the petty things that I have dealt with. You know what I mean? So that, that's, that, that was really the perspective for me was just to, to examine my life and see where I could be better and, was- and, and to, to try to make that happen. Fantastic story, Ricky. It's great to see that you're on the road to recovery, and uh, we wish you all Absolutely. the best in the future. Thank you very much for this. Appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for sharing your story, and I am so excited for you as well. I wish I could reach through the uh, microphone and give you a big hug. <laughs> I as well, and I sure appreciate everything y'all have done for me, and uh, I sure wish y'all luck getting the story out, and uh, maybe some more people could benefit from it. Thanks, Ricky. Y'all have a good day. You as well. And that's another edition of Cannabis Health Radio. If you'd like to help us out here at Cannabis Health Radio, then go to our webpage and make a donation. It can be a monthly donation or a one-time donation for as little as $3. Wherever you are in the world, thanks very much for listening. You've been listening to the Cannabis Health Radio podcast. Visit our website, CannabisHealthRadio.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.